The Trials games were a highlight on the Xbox Live Arcade. Surprisingly realistic physics with arcadey track design, and it just worked. Both Trials HD and Evolution were wonderful, wonderful games. Though for me, Fusion lost a bit of that flair. It was still just as fun to control, and the tracks look absolutely gorgeous, but few of its gameplay additions did anything to make the game more enjoyable. If anything, they hindered it. But here comes Trials Rising, and remarkably, in the series' 19 year long history, the general feel has remained the same. And that's for the best. Rising takes us on a globe trotting adventure where we hop, crash, and crash again. And if that sounds familiar, that's because it is. This is Trials in its purest form, but it does share one thing with Fusion, and that's scope. Some of these tracks are stunning as you plummet down a roller coaster or drive through a Hollywood set, and though compromises were made to get it running on Switch, I still found myself impressed by a large number of locales. Yeah, there are extreme examples of setbacks, like this level being set in a sandstorm on Switch, whereas it's clear as day on PS4, but this really is just an exception. What did bother me though was the lack of feedback in several instances, like I'm pretty sure there's meant to be some kind of splash here? The biggest offender though is the frame rate. Rising doesn't even appear to run as well as the Xbox Live Arcade titles. It's far from unplayable, but I don't think a console trials has ever been so sluggish. Heck, end course explosions can often be like a slideshow, but visuals aren't the only compromise. Trials only has two control inputs for you to worry about, leaning and accelerating. And the accelerating part is kind of a problem on Switch. Without analog triggers, you can either zoom at full speed or not zoom at all. Now, throttle control doesn't become essential until later parts in the game, but it hits you pretty hard when you become incompetent at tracks simply because a key part of the controls are absent. The game even sometimes tells you not to use all your throttle, and from the offset, that seems kind of impossible on Switch. Apart from, it's not. See, the triggers absolutely don't offer analog control, but the right stick does. It's a solution, but it's not exactly a comfortable one. So your other option is a GameCube controller, and this absolutely does offer analog triggers. It works like a charm in Trials, and you don't even lose any essential buttons. So you can play with control parity, but you have to jump through some hoops to do so. And this makes handheld mode my least preferred option, which is a shame because the game lends itself so well to the pick up and play formula. But when you're all set up, docked with a GameCube controller, Trials Rising can still be a blast, but I don't think we're back to the greatness of the initial Xbox Live games. There's a pretty slow difficulty curve with Rising, all things considered. Instead of a level select screen, the game puts you in this somewhat messy map where you make your way around the world. Only I didn't quite find the same sense of addictive perfectionism with Rising. For one, the easy label really does mean easy this time. You'll still flop into a few obstacles, but I managed to clear a large chunk of tracks on my first try, and many of the early harder ones only required a small amount of retries. It wasn't until a few hours in where Rising really starts to ramp things up, though there were a few somewhat cheap moments, like sometimes having to come to an abrupt stop when most of the game has you accelerating like crazy. A few courses certainly need you to learn through failure, and it rarely feels organic to do it that way. There's no real story this time around, and that's for the best as I really wasn't feeling it with Fusion. All Rising cares about is that moment to moment gameplay. The closest you'll get to story is small dialogue boxes from coaches and other professionals. They're far from intrusive. With how many different countries you visit, this is easily the most varied game in the series visually, but with the more gradual difficulty curve unlike Fusion, most of them are over in just over a minute. This isn't a bad thing per se, but it takes a long time to get into that addictive flow of just one more, and that's perhaps my greatest affiliation for the Trial series. You can make it a bit harder for yourself by revisiting earlier levels with side objectives, but even many of these don't offer nail-biting situations. Performing six flips in a track that already has a lot of airtime isn't tough, it's just essentially playing the same track again, though replaying tracks is perhaps the greatest incentive of a seasoned Trials player. Being in competition with everyone on your friends list is when Trials is at its best. There is traditional multiplayer both online and off, but with how basic the selection of tracks is, Time Trials ends up being the biggest multiplayer draw, which is kind of perfect for the Switch. Heck, perhaps they even realise the single player tracks are the true strength, though there is kind of co-op with the co-op bike, and it's absolutely hilarious to work with. Not always practical, but it is a lot of fun. I really can't understate the level of content there is in here. There's the most tracks the series has ever had, all with reasons to revisit them, and then there's the Trials Stage Editor. Not the most friendly tool in the world, but it's certainly powerful, and if we're going off what people have made in prior games, we should be looking at a near limitless amount of things to do. The only real limit is your imagination. Rising does feature both player and bike customization, and while neither do anything worth noting, they do come in loot crates. You can't buy them with actual money, but that doesn't mean that Charles Rising is free of microtransactions. In fact, the game has two bikes locked away behind in-game currency, and if you want, you can buy them right off the get-go with Acorn currency, which of course you buy with actual money. Some gears even Acorn currency exclusive, so if you're really into cosmetics, you might have to pay up. It's far from Ubisoft's worst form nickel in diming, you can ignore it, but you can definitely feel its presence. 
Trials Rising on its own merits is a fine entry to the series. It doesn't do anything too outlandish and returns to the same solid structure that's carried all the games. The result is something that isn't exactly going to challenge your expectations, but if this is your first foray into Trials or you just want a portable take on the series, you'll likely get a lot out of this. I like Trials Rising. I think the series has jumped to greater heights in the past, but the same addicting Trials gameplay is still here, and it's cool to be able to take it on the go, even if they had to compromise the game to enable that. Thanks so much for watching, and of course be sure to subscribe to Game Explain for a lot more on Trials, and other things gaming too. Until next time, bye!